Hey guys, just want to talk to you real quickly about pull-ups. We've had a lot of questions on progressions, pull-ups, how we get them. So this is how we like to go through developing pull-ups. Now, there are a million different ways to skin the cat. This is just one of them. And these are just some various progressions we like to use. One thing we don't like to use is bands, mainly because of the fact that is, I've seen loads of people who can do like 10 plus pull-ups with a band but can't do a single ring row. So with that said, let's, bring, let's move on. What we're going to bring you through here is um, an order of progression with exercise that we find very useful for developing them. Starting with ring rows, we genuinely feel that if you can get very, very good ring rows at a good strong ring row, pull-ups are very, will come very easy to you. Um, when we were putting this video together, we actually discussed that if you can nail ring rows, you can actually skip straight to pull-ups, you can develop that amount of strength. But we'll go through ring rows, we'll go through over the bar holds, We'll go from negatives, we'll do we'll about rope climbs, chin-ups and pull-ups. You can see a natural progression there, ring rows have developed that strength more in the pulling motion rather than here, but it's still going to develop that whole, that whole area for pulling strength. And over bar holds helps you developing literally, number one, getting used to your body weight, um, and number two, getting used to, um, to being on the bar itself. Negatives, just a progression from that, and I saw negatives say over about five seconds. Rope climbs, great for the grip, and then think about it, a rope climb is a partial pull up, so fantastic for that. We believe chin ups and partial chin ups are like a next step for the simple fact that if I'm doing a chin up, I get to use more of my bicep. People tend to find chin ups that much easier, so next step will go to the chins, and partial ups obviously first, and then finally, last but not least, on the pull ups. I want to take the camera off from Taylor now. He's going to jump in. We're going to look at some uh, ring rows. So Mateo's doing a ring row. What he's doing right now is this is where we want to get to. He's got a nice straight body. His abs are tight. His butt's tight. He's looking up. He's going to pull control to the top of the rings. Pause for a second and lower down under control. And he can take a break there from stuff. So you can see pull control, lower down under control. Now, if you can do that for five or ten reps, you can probably jump straight to your pull-ups. However, if you can't do that, how you can build up to that is by stepping a few steps back from the box. So he's going to do the exact same thing. He's just going to lean back from where he is there. Now, the only difference is his feet aren't up in the box. He still has that nice flat body, um, abs tight, butt tight. He's looking for. He's going to control up the rings. Pause for a second. Control down. Only difference here, his feet aren't the box. The advantage of this is that it allows you to take some of your body weight off, makes it a little bit easier, and therefore you can use that to progress. As you progress, you get closer and closer to the box. So, when we have those, let's talk about over the bar holds. So he's gonna jump up in the bar. He's gonna hold his chin over the bar, and stay nice and controlled. Again, he's got that nice hollow rock position, which you can see from the side. Oh, he makes sure it's on now. <laughs> Legs are t together, abs are tight, he's over the bar, and he's gonna come down. While we're here, we're gonna practice some negatives. Let's go back up again, we'll do that negative. Sorry, Mateo. You likely need some exercise. Negative, all you're gonna do the negatives, over the bar hold, and then nice, slow descent. You can take a break. Taking about five seconds of the way down, showing that control. That negative portion of the uh, rep will do wonders for your control. We're gonna play next with some, whoops, with some rope climbs. So, the reason we want to use these is, is, as we say, he's going to start from the ground. It's a great way of practicing that pulling motion with less, with less effort. So to make it easiest, he keeps the legs nice and close. He's going to keep a nice straight line from his hip to his shoulders. And he's just going to pull arm over arm. As you can see there, there are little pull-ups every time. Bringing that on a level, he'll lie back down the ground. And he'll put his legs dead straight. So like the ring rows, it's just another progression. And then he's going to pull nice flat by the whole way up, nice and easy. If that's something that is easy for him, or he can develop to, his next step up is he can actually try to pull partially up the rope, so three or four feet up the rope. And that's loads. As you can see again, there are little pull-ups, little pull-ups the whole way. Moving on to chin-ups now. This is your workout today, Matteo, is it? <laughs> With the chin-up, as I say, it allows you to use more of the bicep. So you can come in, start from the bottom. At first, you can do a partial movement halfway up and come down. So just do a partial there. 
Again, this may not be a full range of motion for competition, but that's still going to help develop. As he does more partials, he'll eventually come into a full pull-up. So, coming through, again, this is slightly easier. People find this easier than doing pull-ups themselves. So, the fact there's more bicep involved, a little bit easier. Last but not least, he can start with some partial pull-ups, which can eventually develop into full range of motion pull-ups. Staying nice and tight, hollow rock position. Mateo's got those feet together. There he is. Well done. Controlling up and through. One last tip to tell you about is as Mateo comes over the bar, you notice he's pulling those elbows behind him. That helps just get that chin over that last portion of the bar. So you just look at this next one again. It's the last bit of work we make Mateo do. And he's pulling it through and then controlling down. One last thing to say to that is that you'll notice every time Mateo is looking to control himself back down. Just like the negative, you'll get a lot from the negative portion, or from the descending portion of the rep. I'll hand you back to Mateo now. Proper budget for your tapping. We've got one, <laughs> one percenter, one down person, and the cameraman is the same person. So, let's talk about how we put these together. As you can see, we've kind of put a, an order of how we would develop it. If you can do, say, 10 ring rows, we were saying, on the box, I'd be shocked if you can't do a pull-up. Genuine, you'll definitely have the strength to do a pull-up. But, how do we practice these? Well, a great way of practicing um, these various progressions is, I find, in like little 10 minute slots. So, firstly, I'd never do more than, no more than three times a week. For the simple fact is you don't want to um, develop a repetitive, a repetitive stress injury from, you know, tennis elbow, something like that, from just doing sheer volume, sheer volume. Two or three times a week is plenty for practicing any of these skills, and after a couple of weeks that will hone you in quite quickly. One of my favorite ways personally for developing these or any other skill is to use ladders and imams. So let's talk about ladders first. So, if I'm doing ring rows, for example, I can do one ring row a minute one, two ring rows a minute two, three on three, etc. etc. If I get to a stage, say minute six, I fail, well then minute seven, I just start at one again and develop and bit by bit. As time goes by, I can use that to increase my volume. If I can eventually get to one to 10, well, that's 45 in total. And you know, if you can do 45 ring rows on a box in 10 minutes, I'd be seriously shocked if you don't have pull-ups. So I, th I think ladders are very, very good for those. Imams, which are just every minute on the minute, simply that could be for five or 10 minutes, do two, two ring rows or three ring rows. Develop that bit by bit. If I'm doing e imams with kind of those kind of reps, I'd probably stick to maybe, you know, three or four reps for ring rows, maybe five max, um, and go from there, not more than maybe 20, 25 total reps, um, because of the sheer volume of that. So I'd say, imam is every minute on the minute, ladders is more reps as you go, and so on and so forth. With the different exercise, I think you can do a ring row or an imam for, I'm um, sorry, an imam or ladder for ring rows. With over the bar holds, the way we'd like to do those, or what we like to use, is more like maybe do 30 to 60 second holds and an imam format and then rest a minute and then go again. So maybe over the space of 10 minutes you've done it five times resting between the two of them because that's quite taxing. The same with the negatives. With the negatives we want to encourage nice slow control movement, therefore an imam or a ladder, excuse me, may encourage you to go faster, so therefore I prefer the imam um, style version of that. Make sure you get plenty of rest so you can really and develop a good movement. Rope climbs, I think you can do either or really, to be honest, I think you can mix those up. Um, they get quite grippy and uh, they'll get quite gassed as well, so I think you can mix those up. Chin-ups and partial chin-ups and pull-ups and partial pull-ups, again, either or. With regards to rep ranges, as I say a second ago, I kind of allude to, you know, that whole idea of kind of 15, 20, 25 set reps in total max over the period, I think with plenty. Um, Again, you're always trying to develop that skill, but you're not looking to develop to a stage where you end up getting a, um, a, repetitive, uh, a repetitive stress injury. Um, we've actually, what we've said here is three to four sets of five, but once we can do that with ring rows, if you can get your feet up in the box with ring rows, don't be afraid to go up to kind of the higher number of sets and the fact that uh, a large ladder of ring rows is quite a good one to use. So, in conclusion, kind of key points, Number one, no more than two to three times a week. Um, keep it under kind of 15 to 25 reps. 
keeping them shorter periods, make it enjoyable. Be patient with your reps, okay, look for that perfect movement. If you just go through the motion, you know, if you do those, those ring rows, like you see people like uh, a seal having an epileptic fit, with they're bouncing up and down, you're, all you're doing is getting yourself out of breath, you're not really doing much yourself. Take your time with them, you know, look to develop. Don't underestimate how valuable strict ring rows will be for developing pull-ups. Use each of them, slowly but surely. As I say, whilst I'm a huge fan of over bar holes, negatives, chains, rope climbs, for me personally, I think strict ring rows are one of the best ways of developing the strength of pull-ups. So, a couple of times a week, look for the perfect movement, and be patient, they will come, but be patient. And uh, if you have any other questions, just let us know. Thanks guys.